Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Once again, Neil Mankin, editor of Skin Knuckles Magazines. Uh, interesting tips and ideas and doing things economically. How uh, to do it yourself, how yeah. to work authentic on your authentically restored old car. Right, these are, these are old time tips from an old time guy. This is the way they did it back in the day and you can do it pretty inexpensively. What are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna to talk about a little thing called spark plugs. Oh, okay. How to clean them, how to maintain them. Right, right. Uh, it's, it's a part of the car that's generally ignored. Right. All too often ignored. Uh, spark plug is sort of like when you go to the doctor and they take a blood test and they check all of the, the readings on your blood test. Mm -hmm. Spark plug can do the very same thing for your engine. Okay. Pull the spark plugs, lay them out, but lay them out in order. One, two, three, four, right, right, right along. Right. You want to read the spark plug after you get it out. If the tip of the plug is a nice, even tan or gray, that means everything is good and right. burning properly. In fact, if you go online and you look up spark plug, yep. you'll probably see a chart online from one of the companies that'll show NSK you. NSK has it, Champion yeah. has it, they all have it. You take it. your spark plug and mine looks like, oh, the fourth one there, and that'll tell you what your problem Even is. Even Skin Knuckles has done it. Yeah, yeah, We've they had go. it too. Sure, sure. But look at the plug. If the, wet, the tip is wet, sniff it. Yeah. If, it's, if it smells of gasoline, it's an indication your rings may be bad. You're right. getting gasoline up past the rings. Or you could have the wrong plug. Or you, too cold to plug? It could be too cold to plug, right. but generally, the plugs are pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if it's a little bit of a problem, and that would normally happen in one cylinder rather than all. But check the plugs. If it's oily, oil is getting past the rings. Right, right. If it's a dry, powdery, black carbon, yeah. it means that it's too rich a mixture. You're getting right. too much gas in there. And although it's burning, yeah. you're not burning it completely. Now, if it's oily, do you want to go to a hotter plug? If you have an old car and you don't feel like doing a ring job on it, if you run a hotter, a hotter plug, you will can that, run a slightly yeah. hotter plug. Yeah. And there's a whole grade of heat levels. Right. Uh, but remember, this is only a band aid. Right, right. You're not fixing the problem, you're right. just making the symptoms disappear. Right, right. That's all. But once you get the plugs out and you've determined what the problem is with each of the cylinders, comes time to clean the plug. One of the very worst things that you can do to a spark plug is to put it in a sandblaster to clean it. See that? Reason being, the sand is a very, very strong abrasive. Right. It will break down the glaze on the ceramic insulator. Well, I've been guilty of that. What we used to do is, and I was told to get all the, you know, and then use a brake cleaner and just soak it to get all the... Brake cleaner, part. carburetor cleaner, anything like that. But, but uh, don't what, use those at all, huh? I don't recommend that they be media okay. blasted for two reasons. Number one is the glaze on the insulator. Mm -hmm. What you've got is a picture of a, a spark plug here, and you notice that the center electrode goes down and it's protected by a ceramic insulator. Mm. And that sits inside the outer shell, which is a metal shell, which is part of the ground uh, electrical system. But there's a little gap in between the right, right ceramic yeah. and the metal shell. Here it is enlarged. You have to make sure that you get all of the dirt and grease and crud out of there. I use a very, very sophisticated tool for that. Yeah. I took an old finishing nail. Okay. I pounded it smooth, pounded it flat, and it's a little knife blade. It will fit into the spark plug and act like a knife blade in just cleaning the crud out of there. I see. Well, can you just, I mean, would brake cleaner do it as well? Or? Not. Brake cleaner is it like a carbon it gets hard, yeah. But th some of this stuff is very, very hard. It's been baked on. You wouldn't believe how much trouble I had getting yeah. these plugs. So you don't you don't wind up scoring the inside with no, that or anything. No, like, no. You're not gonna do any damage that way. Okay. But you can you can go through and clean all of the loose dirt out and then you can use brake cleaner right. or carburetor cleaner. Right. Put it into the plug. Do this again, clean it out again. Another reason you don't want to sandblast is very often you get particles of sand in between the insulator and the metal shell. Right. And they don't come out. And even when you use compressed air, it yeah. doesn't blow out. But when the plug is in the engine, the metal expands. Oh, I see. Let's that uh, sand sure. drop out into the cylinder. Not a good thing. Well, we'll get rid of our spark plug blaster. We have one on the wall over there. <laughs> We've been using it for years. Um, Easiest thing to do. Now, I mean, I don't like wire brushing a spark plug. 
because you'll be able to take any kind of plating off, you know, right. zinc plating or right. nickel plating. You, you can just take that off. Just use a brush. Right. Put it in a vise, brush it, clean it up really, really good, and you can do a great job of cleaning a spark plug that way. Now, any advantage to the platinum plugs over the regular plugs, or is a lot of that marketing? No, they, they are a hotter plug. Yeah, but yeah. for the older cars, you really don't need that. Right. Uh, for an older car, let's say a pre-1950 car, you really don't want to use resistor spark plugs. Right. You don't want to use resistor wires. Well, what, it, but if you have a car from the 40s, it probably has a radio, correct? It, would have, it might have a radio, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so you uh, would want... I would rather use a, a condenser yeah. on the distributor oh, or see. in the, in the okay. radio. Because every time you put any kind of resistance in the electrical system, you're not getting as much of a spark. When you gap a plug, I strongly suggest use a wire gap. Oh, as opposed to a? As opposed to a flat knife blade. See all those things you're learning today? Why you ask? I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah. As a plug burns, yeah. it abrades. Gotcha. First of all, the electrode rounds off. It's no right. longer flat. And the bottom electrode gets a groove in it. Right. The blade will go right through. It will not touch the low point or the high point. I see. It'll touch the high point, but not the low point. Right, right, yeah. So you're not getting a true reading. Okay. If you use a wire gauge, it will go into that oh, I see. little indentation gotcha. and measure the actual gap. Oh. Most spark plug gauges, whichever kind you're using, has a little tool on it so they can use it to increase the gap if necessary. Right. Or very gently. Right. You don't want to do it on a very hard surface. Right. You don't want to take a hammer and bang right, at it. Right. Just very, very gently. You're only closing it down a couple of thousandths of an inch. And the bigger the gap, the harder your ignition system has to work, correct? It's, Especially it, you have yes, a magneto yes. or something. Yeah. Because the spark has to jump a sure. greater distance. Right, right. Um, owner's manual, service manual, Chilton's, uh, motor's manual, they all give the correct gap right. for your car. They're all subject to a little bit of variation. The other thing you want to remember is when you reinstall a spark plug, torque it. Right. Just don't crank it down there and tighten it down. Right. Depending on the size of the plug and depending on the kind of material the block is made of, whether it's aluminum or whether it's cast iron, there's a whole chart right. of torque values. Now, I always put a little anti-seize on my threads. Good idea. Okay. Very good idea. You did something okay. right. Okay. okay. <laughs> and you always want to replace the copper crush? Absolutely. If yeah. you can replace the copper crush washer, yeah. great thing. Right. That will seal the plug and keep leaks under the compression. Very good, very good. Well, Neil, once again, the old spark plug is still sparking here. So, Neil, thank you, terrific. Thank, thank these, you. Are, uh, these are great tips.